The mimetic entities are entities that are essentially created out of information and they inhabit the noosphere, the realm of human consciousness and ideas, rather than necessarily like your next door neighbor who inhabits his house. And they're spread through stories and tales and descriptions and poetry and invocations and architecture and all these different things. We might say something like Jesus or one of the African Loas or something was a human being at one time. Their story combined with legends and other stories, so it became something more than the, the, the seed kernel of the person there. Of a once Wall Street old power is retailed early in bed and later on life down through all Christian minstrelsy. <laughs> Of course, there are entities that probably never had <laughs> a human at their origin. Richard Dawkins, our top atheist, gave us the idea of memetics in his book, The self Sheen, years ago, where the information in a biological organism is encoded in the genes. In a memetic organism, it's purely information that we share from mind to mind. And we share it through the things we say about these entities, about the artwork that we create about them. It's not just these historic gods and goddesses and mythological characters that are mimetic entities. We have, particularly in our culture, fictional entities and movie characters and things like that that really exist in the same place in our culture that gods and goddesses did in earlier cultures. Now we have characters like, um, I like to use Sherlock Holmes as a good example of a mimetic entity. We've had, I don't know, any number of different kinds of forms of Sherlock Holmes, played by different actors. Uh, when I was a kid, it was Basil Rathbone. I'm convinced that the solution of this horrible deed lies in an understanding of psychic phenomena. Although I don't expect you to admit that, Mr. Holmes. I assure you, Penrose, I neither believe nor disbelieve in anything, including psychic phenomena. You know, now we have Robert Downey Jr. playing the same character, but it's all the same character. It's Sherlock Holmes, he has certain recognizable characteristics which remain constant through all of these different incarnations. Now, Sherlock Holmes has certainly influenced our world in a lot of different ways. Crime investigation uh, was way back when influenced by the idea of deductive reasoning and looking for clues and fingerprinting and all these different things that Conan Doyle was writing about in the Sherlock Holmes stories way back when. Similarly, our more religiously oriented mimetic entities, gods and goddesses, uh, have had a major impact on this world whether or not they ever physically existed. You've got characters like Jehovah and Allah. Wow, they've uh, transformed culture throughout the world. They've been responsible for wars, for peace, for technology, for economics, for all kinds of things in, in different places. Um, so when, uh, to my mind, when somebody like Richard Dawkins, who should really kind of understand the memetics of this, um, says, that, well, God doesn't exist, um, I'd like to kind of nudge him a little bit and say, it's not necessarily that he doesn't exist. We're, we're more debating what level he exists on, in what way these gods, and we're not just talking about God, we're talking about gods, goddesses, imaginary friends, demons, spirits, angels, fictional characters, movie characters. They all take up residence in the same areas of the brain. Uh, they all run on the same, the same brain hardware. It is possible to create your own new mimetic entities. Uh, and people do it all the time. Novelists create new characters. And magicians work on creating and contacting different new entities. For my part, I uh, worked with creating an entity called Atem, uh, who exists mainly in the form of a book called Metamagic, the Book of Atem. And readers are invited to participate in uh, helping to perpetuate and to bring Atem into the world uh, by reading the book and by sharing the ideas. So you get to kind of join in and, and participate in the way a mimetic entity is developed and spread and so on. So like kind of hands-on practice of doing that.
people can also have a mimetic entity associated with them. Uh, in, sometimes I, I'll ask some of my classes what they know about George Washington. We usually get a few different ideas that have been perpetuated about George Washington. Number one, he was our first president of the United States. Number two, he had wooden teeth. Number three, he never told a lie and he chopped down a cherry tree. Now, essentially, all of those little points, at least to some degree, are bullshit. He was something like the third or fourth president of the Continental Congress. The first president to use that was actually John Hansen. Washington was, however, our first elected president. Washington did not have wooden teeth. He had teeth made out of ivory like everybody else's uh, dentures back then. The story about him never telling a lie and chopping down the cherry tree was actually invented after his death by a biographer who was attempting to sell a book. So we have these, these legends. Now, are they true? Are they false? In the objective historian category, maybe they're false. In the, this is the mimetic entity of George Washington that we revere as our first president, they're true because they are the mimetics that go into creating this. Even our historical characters that we, uh, uh, that we think about as being real people, uh, very often were responding more to the mimetic entity that developed. In some cultures, that's a little bit more conscious. I mentioned the African Loas, and they're pretty straight about it. They say, Chango, he was a great king once. And it began with the legends of him being a king, and it combined with the other legends and of other kings. But I think it's neat that some cultures can actually perceive things as a collection of legends and still equate them with having power or a spiritual force. Anytime you give one of these entities attention, and, and even, uh, you know, I will, I'll go back to Dawkins and Jehovah, every time he denies God, he's still talking about it in language that presents it as an entity. And by saying God is not a character who lives up in the clouds and has a big long beard, and so on, even including the word not doesn't take out the fact that you're perpetuating these various memes about the character. So these various characters that don't have to have a physical component, simply by thinking about them in various ways and, and by denying them in specific ways, uh, nonetheless tends to perpetuate them.